Well, digital came in, oh, 10 years after I stopped filming, but some 40 years ago, I, I got a phone call from Colin Young, who was the director of the National Film and Television School at Beaconsfield, and he said to me, will you, will you come along and do a lighting workshop? And I said, well, I've, I've not done anything like this. What, what do you want me to do? He said, come and do what you like. So I went to Beaconsfield and met the students and we worked on the campus and I had students who were studying different things like editing and design and they all came together. So I had two crews working with two 16mm cameras and we did various setups around the campus with one camera and with the other camera we filmed how it was being done. And that was my first introduction to working with, with students. And it opened a whole new page in my career because I then started to go to the international film workshops in Rockport, Maine. And amongst others, Sean Bobbitt was one of my students there. And I met him many years later and he told me that going to that workshop had influenced his decision to become a cinematographer. And I thought, oh, that's great. I think working with students around the world, because I've continued to do that in Budapest and Camera Marge and so on, it keeps you fresh. And it's lovely to meet the young, up and coming future cinematographers and to listen to them and to talk to them and give them some encouragement and open a few windows for them, share a few jokes. How to tell the story. How to tell the story with where you put the camera, how you move the camera, what the lens is, and how you light it. Because, you know, one can change the whole atmosphere with light. I think for anyone studying to be a cinematographer, you need to study light all your life. Because it's if you, if you just look at daylight, it's constantly changing. And the direction of light and the contrast in the light are so important so that one becomes aware of this all the time, what, what the light is like. And when you're working on, particularly on exteriors, where the light's changing and you've, you've got a long sequence that might take you several days to do, and you've got to find a way of of making it look as if it's all happened at the same time. And that isn't always easy. I can't tell you how other cinematographers approach their work, but when I'm working with students, I emphasize this question of tonality and you know, take it on board if you want to, but you've got to be able to just look at something in terms of being lighter or darker than what's behind or in front of. But one is also, of course, working with colour and working with other heads of department. You know, I, one always has a very close relationship with the production designer, costume designer, makeup. One is growing up. If you think, it, you know, when you first start filming and you call yourself a cinematographer, um, and you may have come out of film school or you may have grown up through coming through the camera department, you're, you're at the beginning of your career and, and you've got a certain vision and you've got a certain amount of experience. But I think as you get older, if you've got the imagination and the talent and you're, you're willing to work at it, then you can improve. You, you can learn and you can learn you know, from life. It's one of the things I always, when I'm talking to students, one of the questions I ask them is, when you're not here working on the set, what are you, what are you studying? What, what are you researching to help you to become a good cinematographer? And sometimes I get the answer that I'm looking for, but not always, because the answer that I want is that you look at life and you study human behavior and emotions and body language. And you study light and how you can control light. And then you bring all that together on the set, whether it's on location or in the studio, and you, you bring all that together 
and you relate it to what's happening in front of the camera because that's what it's about because one might photograph something beautifully and the costumes are wonderful and everything all that works but if the performance isn't there if there's something wrong maybe it's the script or it's the interpretation then you haven't got it have you so it's it's all of these things coming together that makes for a successful movie a good movie The ability to interpret a story using the camera, controlling the light and the camera movement, the lenses to enhance that story and working as a team with the director and the designer and other heads of department so that you all come together, so no weak links in the chain. And of course the first assistant director is a very important person in this and, and also the script supervisor. There are other people also that one confers with. You know, what are we going to do? How long is it going to take? If we're starting a new scene, I said, what do we go out on the scene before? What's the image, the last image, before we start this scene? So, you, although the editor can change all those things, that you, you, you're building up a picture of how it might look. Because coverage is so important. How much coverage? There are a lot of scenes in Golden Pond that are made in, shot in one take with no coverage because it's all there. You know, There's a scene near the birthday cake. She comes from the kitchen and walks to the dining room area and the rest of the group are there and we track and then we pan and we do it all in one take with no coverage. Now, if you've got a director and who knows what he wants or she wants, and you've got good actors, and you, you don't need coverage, why do coverage? Understand, of course, that with television, where you've got to work to a very tight time schedule, it, you have got to have more coverage, otherwise you can't shorten or lengthen. But with a movie, it's different. Some scenes require a lot of coverage, and others work as an entirety. But that's director's choice.